we know the importance of metals and non-metals in our life. Let's look at the chemical properties of these metals and non-metals. That is, how do we chemically classify the elements as metals or non-metals? So we know that when the elements have one, two or three valence electrons, they can easily lose these three electrons to gain an octet, that is to fulfill an octet structure. While losing the electrons, such substances are known as metals. The elements that have five, six or seven valence electrons, in order to complete the octet, they can easily gain electrons. Such substances are known as non-metals. And when there are four electrons in the outermost shell, these elements neither gain nor lose. Such elements, they share electrons. So such elements are known as metalloids. So when we have sodium, the electronic configuration of sodium is 2, 8, 1. So now it has one extra electron. In order to have an electronic configuration, that of the nearest noble gas, it has to lose one electron. So it loses one electron to become Na+, plus, which has the electronic configuration 2, 8. So now, this is stable. Similarly, for non-metals, chlorine, it has an electronic configuration 2, 8, 7. So now, in order to satisfy the octet rule, it has to gain one electron. That is, it gains one electron to become Cl-, minus, as now there is one extra electron, so its electronic configuration becomes 2, 8 and 8. So the outermost shell now has 8 electrons. So metals are those elements which have 1, 2 or 3 valence electrons and non-metals are those which have 5, 6 or 7 valence electrons. Now metals, since they have 1, 2 or 3 valence electrons, they can easily lose these electrons to become stable. So when we have sodium, it can lose one electron to become Na+. In case of non-metals, chlorine gains one electron to become stable or to, or to satisfy the octet rule. So now in this case, they lose and gain one electron. Similarly, magnesium. Magnesium can lose two electrons since the outermost shell has two electrons. So in order to satisfy the octet rule, it loses two electrons to become Mg2+. And similarly, when we have oxygen, the electronic configuration of oxygen is 2, 6. So in order to satisfy the octet, this gains two electrons to become O2 minus. So metals lose electrons and non-metals gain electrons. During electrolysis, we know that there are two types of electrodes. The cathode, which is the negatively charged electrode and the anode, which is the positively charged electrode. So during electrolysis, the cations migrate towards cathode. Cathode is negatively charged, cations are positively charged. In physics, we have studied that unlike charges attract. So during electrolysis, the metals are discharged at the cathode. So at cathode, the metals are discharged. So sodium, in order to become stable, since it is Na+, it has to gain one electron, so it is discharged at the negatively charged electrode, which is cathode, to become neutral Na. Since the cations migrate towards cathode, the anions migrate towards anode. So the metals are discharged at cathode and the non-metals are discharged at anode. So if we take an example of chlorine, it is Cl-, minus. it is discharged at anode, it becomes Cl- since one Cl atom is not stable, it combines with another Cl atom to become chlorine gas. So the metals are discharged at cathode and non-metals are discharged at anode. Now if you look at the reaction of metals with acids. So we have sodium. It reacts with HCl. In HCl, we know this is H plus Cl minus and Na usually exists in the form of Na plus 
So now unlike charges attract, so Na reacts with Cl to form NaCl and hydrogen gas is released. So when metals react with acids, they release hydrogen gas and they form a salt. But when non-metals react with acids, so if you look at the reaction of Cl with H2SO4, in H2SO4 we know H is H plus and SO4 is in the form of SO4 2 minus. So now when Cl has to react with H2SO4, since this also exists in the negative form, it cannot react with negative SO4 2 minus to release hydrogen gas. So in case of non-metals, there is no reaction when the non-metals react with acids. So metals react with acids to release hydrogen gas and they form a corresponding salt and non-metals do not react with acids. Which gas is evolved when metals react with acids? So when metals, they react with acids, if we take HCl for example, they form the corresponding salt, that is MCL, and hydrogen gas is released. So the gas evolved when metals react with acids is hydrogen gas. Now let's look at this reaction. In this, we'll see the reaction of calcium with water. So observe what happens. We put a piece of calcium. So you see bubbles of gas are formed which can be collected in this test tube. So when calcium reacts with water, it forms calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas is released. Again, in this H2O exists in the form of H plus, OH minus. This is Ca2 plus. So calcium reacts with OH minus to form the corresponding hydroxide and hydrogen gas is released. Similarly, potassium, it reacts with water to form the corresponding hydroxide and hydrogen gas is released. So when metals react with water, they form the corresponding hydroxides and hydrogen gas is released. But if you look at the reaction of non-metals with water, so now we have Cl which exists in the form of Cl minus and H2O is H plus OH minus so now Cl minus cannot react with OH minus to release hydrogen gas. So when non-metals react with water, there is no reaction. The non-metals do not react with water. Metals. Metals form the metallic oxide. So Na2O is a metallic oxide. Calcium oxide is a metallic oxide. So when metals react with oxygen, they form the metallic oxides. When the metallic oxides react with water, they form the corresponding metal hydroxides. And these metal hydroxides, we know are bases. So the metallic oxides are known as basic oxides. These metallic oxides, when they react with water, they form the corresponding hydroxides, which are bases. So metal oxides are known as basic oxides. And now if we see the non-metallic non oxides, so we have SO2, SO3, NO2 and so on. These are the non-metallic oxides. So when non-metallic oxides, they react with water, they form the corresponding acids. So SO2 forms sulfurous acid, SO3 forms sulfuric acid, NO2 forms nitric acid and at the same time nitric oxide is also formed. But the main product is the corresponding acid which is nitric acid. So the non-metallic oxides, they form the corresponding acids and so the non-metallic oxides are known as acidic oxides. So the metallic oxides, they are known as basic oxides as they form the corresponding bases and the non-metallic oxides as they form the corresponding acids they are known as acidic oxides. You remember the metal activity series? In this metal activity series, 
the metals are arranged in order of decreasing reactivity so the metals on top they are highly reactive and the reactivity decreases as we go down the series so let's look at some reactions copper sulfate reacts with zinc to form zinc sulfate and copper in this case zinc displaces copper and forms znso4 plus copper similarly if copper sulfate reacts with iron it forms feso4 plus copper in this case fe displaces copper and forms feso4 and copper is released or copper neutral copper atom is formed and now if we look at the reaction of zinc sulfate and copper in this case copper is not able to displace zinc so now we have seen that zinc can displace copper but copper cannot displace zinc why is this happening why zinc can displace copper from from copper sulfate but copper cannot displace zinc from zinc sulfate why is this so this is because in the metal activity series zinc and copper zinc is more reactive than copper so zinc can displace copper from its salt solution whereas copper cannot displace zinc so based on the reactivity of the metals a displacement reaction takes place in which a more reactive metal can displace a less reactive metal from its salt solution but the less reactive metal cannot displace the more reactive metal so such type of reactions are known as displacement reactions as there is a displacement taking place in this a more reactive metal displaces a less reactive metal from its solution so only in cases when there is a more reactive metal it can displace a less reactive metal so now will this reaction take place that is there is copper and there is feso4 solution so will this reaction of copper plus feso4 take place in this case we have cu plus feso4 so in order to find out if this reaction will take place or not we have to see the metal activity series to see whether copper or iron which of the two is more reactive let's see we have copper and we have iron so in this case iron is more reactive than copper since copper is less reactive than iron copper cannot displace iron so in this case if we have copper plus feso4 since copper is less reactive than iron it cannot displace iron from the solution and this reaction does not take place so based on the reactivity of the two metals in the metal activity series only then the displacement reaction takes place so these are some of the chemical properties of the metals and non metals